Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. With me today are Terry and Bella. (coughs) Bella is the most adorable therapy dog you'll ever meet. And we're going to talk about how therapy dogs can help people with chronic illnesses, which includes Alzheimer's. So thank you to my neighbor, Terry. You're welcome. (laughs) So tell me about Bella. How did you guys get started in therapy? Well, when she was a puppy, I took her to the local pet store where they were doing um, training. And the uh, teacher said, have you ever considered a therapy dog? She's got a great temperament. I said, no, I don't know what that is. (laughs) And uh, so I kind of filed it away. And then, because she was only like 10 months old. And then as I saw Bella, how she was. She's just the most lovable dog, so easygoing, so submissive to other dogs that we'd meet on the walks, and she just wanted to meet everyone. And and so I, I started looking into it when we lived in Southern California and uh, went online, found out that they have to pass the uh, canine good citizen test and started working with her. And it's just your basic stay, sit down, they make they make sure they can be around other dogs without barking or, you know, getting tense or and then they they roll wheelchairs by them and drop things and they just can't be a very nervous dog and she of course did wonderful so then I went and had her evaluated and she passed right away <laughs> and that was eight years ago. Well, I know she's helped train two of my dogs. Well, she trained the middle dog to behave around other dogs. And now she's working on my puppy. <laughs> and it's funny because Bella is, what, 10 pounds? No, she's 15. 15 pounds, little, okay. Little, well, little, yeah. And my smallest golden is 50. So when she gives the puppy a smackdown because <laughs> he's being too hyper, it's hysterical. But she's, yeah, she does something. Yeah, have we a, call it the mama paw. She's yeah. kind of <laughs> lets like, him know. <laughs> enough of this That mayhem. behavior is not okay. <laughs> please stop bouncing off the sidewalk around me. So what does the canine, you said citizenship <clears throat> test? Yeah, canine good citizen good test. Sense. What does that entail? It's like a 10-step. It's put out by the AKC, I believe. You can go online and um, you can work with your dog, like if they have trouble doing one or two, two of the things that you know, like they can't sit and stay or they don't like it. One of the things... Um, you have to have them give hand them off to a stranger on leash, and then you have to go like hide behind a tree or hide behind a building, and they can't get anxious or start whining or barking for you. Um, just things like that. And so we would work on her hardest thing to do, <laughs> still is to this day, is down stay. Like stay there till I call you. Mm-hmm. She goes down. She's down there, but then she like. Pops right up and wants to go over Sorry. to where you are. But that was the only thing she had trouble with. But other than that, she passed with flying colors. So if, if your dog doesn't pass the first time, um, they totally will let you retake it again. You just go home and work with whatever they had a problem with. It's not like guide dogs that no. flunk out. And we have a lot of flunked out guide dogs in the therapy pet program because they're great dogs. They just couldn't be up to the level that a guide dog or service dog has to be. Yeah, that's... That they make a great therapy pet, so... I can see that. Yeah, yeah. guide dogs and service dogs are... They they got to have it together. Yeah. <laughs> I've worked with um, police dogs, and they're amazing. Yes. And I've worked with local <clears throat> agencies of cities that aren't high crime or large. They're, you know, like medium or small size cities, so they... The dogs are almost more pr they hunt out evidence. They hunt out drugs, but they're not. A lot of them don't get a lot of opportunity to actually take down a, a perpetrator, mm-hmm. which sometimes is a challenge because when they do get that opportunity, they're kind of like, "Oh, heck no, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You go bite that person. I'll go over here." <clears throat> so it's funny. Yeah. Um, but I've I, actually seen um, at the airports now. Not only do they have the bomb sniffing, drug sniffing dogs, they have therapy dogs that just go and hang out with people waiting for their flights. And that would be nice. It is good because that's a stressful place. <laughs> yeah, for real. So you've been doing therapy 
dog <coughs> treatments with Bella for eight years, mm-hmm. and she's 10 years old mm-hmm. just recently. So what types of, I know you go to the hospitals. Do you go to nursing homes? or Tell me what she actually does. In her career <laughs> as a therapy pet, um, we have done children's hospitals. We have done um, nursing homes. We've done assisted living. We've done memory care. Um, school, we do dog safety classes at elementary schools where we bring in some dogs and we talk about how you treat animals, how you treat your animal, how they feel what we feel, and to treat them accordingly. And we do... Um, camp during the summer for kids that have disabilities. They can go to camp for a week and have medical staff there that can tend to their needs. And it's each week it's a different illness or condition. So we'll go bring a bunch of dogs up there and hang out. And they'll, especially like the, the autistic kids, dogs are great. Dogs are great for that. They really draw them out. And even if they're a little afraid, I never have a problem with Bella because she's just so small and looks like a stuffed animal. Yeah, she does. <laughs> that no one's afraid of her. And some kids develop fears pretty early to dogs if they've had a bad experience. So that part's good, too. You have a client that has Goldens. Their youngest son is autistic. And they actually bred, did one litter of puppies for special needs families. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a learning experience for them in, in dog breeding and, and all that stuff. I, I told her it wasn't uh, something you do for money. It's something you do for love. Right, so right. She did learn that one. Yeah. But, yeah, I've seen how they just interact differently with dogs than they do with people, mm-hmm. which, you know, I, I've grown up with dogs. My mom brought me home from the hospital, put me on the floor for the dogs to get to know me. So, you know, I've, I've had dogs my whole life. <laughs> I have a funny story. My um, grandson is one, <clears throat> and they have two dogs. And my daughter-in-law brought him to toddler time at the library, and they got up to play afterwards. And <laughs> Carter just started, like, he was parting. Like, he has to walk through the dogs all the time. He's oh, always, like, funny. pushing them aside. So he was doing this to the kids. He's parting the kids. Because he's, like, and, and my daughter-in-law's like, sorry, sorry, we have dogs. He's always trying to push them out of the way because they're always, like, right there. Funny. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while to get taller than most dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always impressed that mine have not grown up with young children. But when I have my own clients come over, and the dogs think all my they, clients come to see them, they're really Their good with little kids. Their sense of what, who can, like my mother-in-law was here, 84. Bella just comes alongside and sits next to her on the couch. She's not jumping on her, trying to play. She's just like, she know they, they sense. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're so good at the nursing homes and memory care. And they just have an extra level of communication that they, they have with those types of patients. Now, my mom's memory care community has her dog and two others that live there. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they've ever had therapy dogs come in. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would really be necessary. My mom's dog, Misty, is pretty friendly. She's very much attached to my mom. And then there's Chiquita, who is barely bigger than a banana, and (laughs) Juan Pierre, who is not as big as his name. And they're super friendly. Um, they have a beautiful courtyard. We were sitting out there one day, and Chiquita decided I was the lap of the day. <laughs> and she just burrowed into my lap and laid down, and yeah. she was very comfortable. And I actually felt a little guilty when I had to get up because yeah. I disturbed the dog. So, And I know most of the residents that are aware of the dogs like the dogs because they, they behave pretty well. I mm-hmm. mean, they don't bark. They don't jump on people. and That's good because sometimes you don't get that. I've been to nursing homes that allow, and they're horrible dogs. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, they're, they're protective mm-hmm. of their person, and that doesn't always go well if you have people trying to come up. or um, So we go to one nursing home that we just started going to um, locally, and they love having Bella even though there's other dogs like they said that's they Bella we just sit in the couch area and they all come sit by her and um so that (laughs) well she's so cute and she's so sweet I mean anybody that doesn't like her obviously has a problem (laughs) 
That's my theory. I don't yeah. know how you guys walk and get very far because well, everybody wants Bella to. Bella doesn't allow. It's not a good walk unless you stop and say hi to someone or she can greet another dog or she's always looking. <laughs> oh, my three do that too. So that's good to know. Yeah. It's more obvious with three golden retrievers pulling you down the hill. Than <laughs> sometimes it's a jog. Mm. Um, so tell me when you, what. What's it like when you guys visit the children's hospitals? Oh, my goodness. Um, the hospital that we visited, well, we did two things. We did children's home, which are kids that are in foster care or waiting to go into foster care, like have been pulled out of their homes mm. for whatever reason, and they're living. It's a beautiful facility. It was great. Um, but those kids were amazing. They had so much fun. Uh, we would bring probably eight to nine dog teams, all different varieties. When you get into the therapy dog program, and we, have, we even have a few therapy cats <laughs> and a miniature horse. Oh, my. But <laughs> all different breeds. A lot of, not a lot of small breed dogs get into. They're just too nervous sometimes mm-hmm. or too barky, too yappy. But we have a lot of golden retrievers, a lot of German shepherds. We have new Newfoundlands. The big dogs do great. They're so we have like ten different dog teams, and they come and we would bring two leashes, and because we can never let go of the leash, that's one of the, our rules that we're always in control. But then the kids want to walk the dog, so then we, ha- you know, latch on another leash, leash, and they can walk them around in the gym or outside wherever we are, and they think that's neat and. They just, the kids love it when we bring the dogs. It's just a good break for them from their, you know, what they're going through. And and then the other place that we used to visit was um, a hospital for severely disabled children. Mm. Either totally wheelchair bound, totally, you know, breathing tubes, the whole nine yards. And they're, it's pretty... Heartbreaking? Heartbreaking and sad, but yet... We have the nurses tell us all the time, you guys don't see what we see, but there is such an energy when you guys come in here, and those kids, we can tell. (laughs) You know, sometimes you're just grabbing their hand and letting, you know, petting the dog for them, but they said their alertness, their... They they settle sometimes. Just they're they're at, they're agitated a lot and, and right. they're in pain or spasms or whatever. But the dogs just totally calm them down for just a little while. She goes and and we love it when you guys come, even though you may not see anything different. Yeah, I can. <laughs> she goes, we see it. We're with them all the time, and we see it. Yeah. Well, they say you know, petting a dog or a cat mm-hmm. is very stress relieving. So I can yeah. see how that would help them a lot. Yeah. And the same type of calming sense with Alzheimer's patients, mm-hmm. because a lot of times because of their memory loss, they're confused and they don't understand they're why. They're, yeah, yeah, it's they get very agitated. Yeah, my mom isn't that way, and. Part of it, I think, is her personality, and I think part of it is having her dog. And Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes she gets agitated about things. Uh, There's a gal that lives in the community that thinks everything is hers, and you have to be very careful that she doesn't go into your apartment or or take your. You know, yeah, she take. Yeah, yeah, it's very common, and I go. And the other day, my mom was wearing her friend's jacket, and her friend was wearing my mom's jacket, and I'm like, whatever. You know, it's like... (laughs) Looks good on you. (laughs) It did. It was like, you know, I... Yeah. You know, but this gal is quite... You know, I don't want to use the term thief, because it's not in... No, she's not intentionally, probably. No, it is definitely not... I mean, it's intentional, but she doesn't realize what she's doing. Right. And my mom's friend is getting very agitated because now she's convinced that this woman has stolen all her stuff and she's convinced my mother that somebody stole all my mother's clothes and I pointed out that my mom's closet is full and she says why well, guy took me a long time to get all that back and I'm like okay <laughs> whatever you know let's go walk the dog because the dog needs a walk distraction is another <laughs> yeah it's you it's... know let's take care of Misty and mm-hmm. and go do something other than talk about the closet that is not empty that you think is empty so it's it's definitely a benefit, and she sits during meals at the same table as the gentleman that has the other two dogs, and his dogs lay in the corner on a pillow. My sister 
bought him a dog bed because she thought the one that they had was all ratty and tired and Mm -hmm. I guess she saw one on sale and she picked it up for him and then she found out that he was just taking the cushions off the outdoor chairs and bringing them in the tiny room (laughs) and she's like okay whatever so now they have their own little dog bed that he brings two meals and they lay there and then I guess he when he's done he picks it up and they all walk back to his room or wherever Mm -hmm. they're going and my mom's dog just hangs out under the table and begs (laughs) Yeah, if they're they're able at that stage of dementia or Alzheimer, um, give them a sense of purpose, mm-hmm. really, to take care of a dog. Um, and for those that maybe don't have a dog there, but it it definitely uh, distracts from what's going. Like you said, the confusion or the boredom. Yeah, sometimes of That's- being in a place or like when we visit the hospital. People are so happy to yeah. get a doggy visit. Just, you know, something different. <laughs> yeah, hospitals are pretty, they're, they're kind of grim. When my dad was in the hospital, I learned about, like, hospital-induced delirium. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, you know, maybe if you had something on the walls, yeah. I would go nuts in here in an hour if, you know, yeah. I had to or be a there. nice view at your window even helps. But, um, yeah, the, definitely the boredom or the... And a lot of them that we visit in the hospital have pets at home, and they're missing them terribly. Yeah. And sometimes I get a little teary-eyed because they're, you know, but they still appreciate the visit, but you can tell they, they miss their pet too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a quick break and hear a message from our presenting sponsor. Sponsors allow us to bring you this podcast free of charge every week, something we absolutely love to do. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. Those dogs, they just steal our hearts and I know. wrap their paw around it. And I've come, steal I've it. come into a room and a patient's on the phone talking to their dog, telling them oh, to eat. Oh, funny! Because <laughs> they won't eat when they're in the hospital. <laughs> that is a problem. Yeah. Oh, especially if that's the the alpha that's in there that usually takes care of them. You know, the that's most. true. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had that with my dogs, but one that we dog sit frequently. Um, sometimes he eats when he's there and sometimes he doesn't. And it's, yeah. I never can figure out what, what it is in his mood that makes it like, yeah. I'm going to eat this time when I'm here and next time I don't eat. So it's mm-hmm. funny. We were talking about giving <clears throat> the Alzheimer's patients a sense of purpose. It's kind of one of the things we've been dealing with, with my mom's dog, because my mom's short term memory is about two minutes. And the other day when I was visiting, Misty needed her back end wiped because unfortunately my mom feeds her from the table and the dog is severely overweight and overfed probably because she doesn't remember that she's fed exactly and that's been a problem for years I'm not sure how she can overfeed her just from the table but I know I had to have another bag of dog food shipped which it should be a 30 day supply and I can't remember the last time I bought the dog food I think it was in the fall and this is spring so it's been months so, you know, she's obviously <laughs> eating some dog food sometimes, and I do have her on a weight maintenance food, but it's not right, helping. Right. But I pointed out that the dog needed attention, and I'm 99% certain my mom didn't take care of it. And I've taken care of the dog's back end a few times, and I'm not super willing to do that every time I go. <laughs> and so it's it's been a discussion. Yeah, there's a p- point where, you know, how much, 
much are they able to take care of? Yeah, I don't think she's... I think if I'm 100% honest, she's she's not taking care of the dog. But I see her interact with the dog, and it's like, okay, it would be better for the dog to go back to the breeder who has said she will take her back and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, rehome her. Misty is nine, so that's Mm -hmm. not an easy feat to begin with, and she'd have to... I don't know. I'm not sure how Misty would deal with that because she's she only listens to my mom. Mm-hmm. She doesn't listen to me. I mean, that dog can give you the nastiest side eye if you tell her to go outside or to go lay down. She just looks at you, and you just know what's going through that mind, and it's not rated PG at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it's been a challenge, and I'm, yeah. I know at some point we're going to have to... Misty will have to probably go somewhere else, but mm-hmm. she's not good anywhere else and I don't want to I don't want to add to my mom's stress so it's always fun to you know deal with the dog but yeah it's a good thing and a bad thing that's why therapy dogs are so great yeah Um, because not everyone is capable of even a little dog I mean that's they still require attention Mm -hmm. and like you said if your mom is kind of missing those cues or double dipping on yeah. the things or quadruple <laughs> dipping on the food <laughs> then, then that's you know not good for that's like the, the other residents dogs don't need grooming like my mom's poodle I'm not sure if they have mobile groomer that comes and bathes them or if somebody assists him to Our bathe family, them yeah maybe comes um, yeah. I've been told he doesn't get family visits oh, really? no um, that's very sad but Right before Christmas, I noticed that the back claw, the dew claw, was they were getting really long. Mm -hmm. And so I dug through my dog paraphernalia and took the memory community, my old dog toenail clippers, because I'm like, you don't want that claw to get so long that it grows back into their foot. So I don't know if, I'm assuming that somebody must have trimmed them because, you know, it's been, what, three months? Mm -hmm. So I would assume in three months the problem would have been significant. I should probably try and check, but, you know, it's like, now I feel like I have to worry about yeah, their dogs. Yeah, if you were a mobile groomer, that would be a good thing to check into. He could go to one place and do a couple dogs. And <laughs> I'm assuming that the assisted living folks, there's a golden retriever that moved in recently to the assisted living part of the community. And I know there's other dogs, not a lot, and I'm assuming some cats, although they don't need mobile grooming. That that visualization is kind of hysterical. I- yeah. <laughs> Although I hear cats do get bathed, right? I had a cat that needed a bath once because <laughs> he got into a scrape with a another cat in our yard, and he z- zoomed through the, the pet door and promptly pooped all over himself. So he got a bath. He didn't like it. No. So, yeah, <laughs> washing a cat is not a good idea. But I, I, I think I'd use oven mitts. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good idea. Um, I need to check in and see if there's a mobile groomer that does go regularly to the community and see if they can help take care of my mom's dog because as we were saying before we started recording to go load up my three drive over to mom's get her dog drive to yeah it's it's a significant time you know yeah. investment and i don't always have that time to invest you know no not when you're running and you've got business. four dogs <laughs> In the car. <laughs> I can barely do one. I don't know. I need to do well, at least with poodles, they don't leave hair everywhere. Once we get done True with the goldens, <laughs> the car needs serious vacuuming out. I've, I've had the dogs in the car before and not vacuumed it out afterwards. And you get in and all of a sudden, you know, the vents are spewing dog hair. It's, it's, <laughs> don't dare wear a lip gloss. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's dogs and... and Alzheimer's patients are fun. It's an interesting part of the journey I'm on. And Mm -hmm. especially, like I said, I've had dogs my entire life. And so I knew you guys did therapy dogs. And so I wanted to find out more about it. There's a lot of studies done. And there is therapy dogs or dogs. They help lower those stress-producing hormones. Like we were talking about, they've done studies on blood pressure and that whole thing. And if you let them... (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. come alongside you and settle down enough. I, I swear sometimes Bella's following me around going, are we going to sit down yet? Mom, mom, can we sit down? Because then she, as soon as I do, she's like right there next to me and like, oh, finally, we're sitting yeah. <laughs> and like, relaxing. I did read recently, the reason dogs nap so much, why they quote unquote sleep so much, mm -hmm. is they don't go into full REM sleep as often as humans. So they need more sleeping time to get the equivalent REM sleep that humans get in a shorter period of time. So I thought that was very interesting. It makes for a great pet, you know, and why dogs are so great is because even if you do work, they're home sleeping anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're sleeping. Yeah. I always tell people when we're done at the hospital, it's like, okay, we're going home for our six-hour nap now. Yeah. <laughs> She's exhausted. I believe it. Well, because how long... Is it a like half a day when you go out or no? Um, we try to keep all the visits that we do to an hour, hour and a half. After that, they're they're pretty much done. Like we've gone to high schools. We do stress relievers at colleges and high schools when they're studying for finals. Oh, geez, I and never had that. I, I had to go know. home and do it. <laughs> but the kids. I love it. We'll bring a bunch of dogs because there's a bunch of kids, right? And especially the college kids who are maybe living on campus and away from home and away from their pets. They're, they're just all over them, and it's hilarious. But Bella's pooped. She is so tired after we do those kid kid ones. Yeah, <laughs> energy I level can see is that. High, yeah. I wasn't sure how long the energy <clears throat> level was sustainable. Yeah, she's good for about an hour and a half, and then she's tired. I can tell. And you kind of read your dog, and they always tell you, you know, if people like people dogs have off days and if you notice you know she's shying away from people or she's you know not engaged like she you know normally is cut it short don't don't put your dog you know stress them out or maybe they're not feeling good that day or you know whatever and so you do you kind of watch I, i've never seen bella not want <laughs> to but i can tell by the end of the hour and a half she's she's tired she's She's ready to go home. <laughs> and you have to give her a bath before you go to most of those places, don't yeah. you? Is that why she's not crazy about baths? Because she gets them regularly? She, Super she's regularly. okay with... She's, and she doesn't love her bath. She wouldn't jump in on her own. But she doesn't like the hair dryer. Mm, and it's because noisy. of... Yeah. And I have to get her partway dry or she just stays wet too long. <laughs> yeah. I used to try drying golden retrievers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she doesn't have it bad. <laughs> No, I could probably drive Bella in about 10 minutes with my hair dryer. Yeah. My dogs, we just mop off the the biggest wet and then kind of fluff them dry so they at least don't soak through the Do couch. Do they zoom around and try to dry, yes. dry themselves on Rub the Rub on the couches, on the couch. yes, yeah. the bed. Yes, yes. Like, thank you for jumping on yes. my bed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I try to, mm -hmm. try to get them at least just to a damp level, but mm -hmm. that takes a lot of drying. And then just let her dry overnight. And I, as long as I you know, can get her brushed out and... She can go two weeks, really, with the, you know, she doesn't, she's not out rolling in the dirt or, you know, she's such a little delicate flower. She'll lay on the patio. That's about as, chase the bees. But. Oh. <laughs> in my yard, we chase bunnies and birds and all kinds of critters. And yeah. then, like I said, the baby dog goes over the fence if we're not careful, so. When I have my um, son's dog here, then it's like, oh, that's a real dog. <laughs> She digs. She rolls around. Oh. She's she's a great gopher finder. She's found a couple gopher tunnels for us. But oh yeah, Remy's been chasing ground. a gopher yeah. in the in where my fruit trees are. And out of all of, I've had six golden retrievers. And out of all of them, my current girl dog, girl dog Luna, is the only one that has ever rolled in gross stuff. We were walking one day, and I'm watching <laughs> the baby dog run because he needs to run. But he doesn't come when he's called because it's not in his thought process to obey yep, that command yet. yet. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it, but we're losing at this point. Mm -hmm. And I see her rolling around, so I'm hollering at her to stop. Well, when I got up to her, she'd been rolling around in a big, stinky pile of poop. And it was very okay, nasty. Bella did do that. Like duck poo or something. This was like cow patty size. Oh, gosh. It was nasty. <laughs> and it was... I mean, I had to... It's like... I had to keep her away from the other two as we walked home because I didn't <laughs> want her to touch it. Yeah, it was like, that was a really long mile home, too. Uh, she smelled so bad. Mm. It's like, 
And I've, out of all the dogs I've had, that's the only one that roll. I mean, why? I don't know why they roll in poop. I don't know. It's don't nasty, know but it's so I funny. Why they have to do that stuff? <laughs> it's in. It's funny, but her and and Remy the baby are super hunters. But she doesn't jump the fence, even though she's the tallest. So I find that very interesting. Mm-hmm. Definite personality differences. Oh, totally within breeds. I had a before Bella. I had a Yorkshire Terrier who never would have been a therapy dog ever, ever, ever in his life. <laughs> they can be a little high strung, right? He was very high strung. And plus, he, we found out he had Cushing's disease, which made him even more high strung. It, it's a cortisol thing, and it just made him super nervous. That dog, I don't think, ever slept except with one eye shut and one eye open. He was just constantly on, and it wore him out. He was. But <clears throat> so then when I, you know, we got Bella. It was just such a different... I was... When I had walked my Yorkie, I was the one crossing the street to avoid people because he mm. was fearful, aggressive. He would be barky, 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 going to tear their, you know, limb to limb. He's <laughs> All five pounds of them? 12 pounds. Okay. And, um, but in our family, he was fine. He loved us all, but he never would have made it. In. So then when Bella came along and she's like, I love everyone, I want to, you know, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I think that I think that's part of the poodle personality. That's what I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And golden retrievers don't know anybody that isn't their ne- next best friend. Right. Yeah. Um, and cavaliers are the same. Her mom was a cavalier. They're very sweet, very loving. They call them the love bugs. So you put that combo together. Yeah. And they're intelligent. So. Mm-hmm. Poodles, they train easy and yeah. So. You'd think goldens would train easy, <clears throat> but. They keep getting tougher. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, like I said, there's a lot of golden retrievers in the therapy pet program, a lot of them. Um, it's funny because when you get their little vests, they wear a vest when we go so everybody knows that they're therapy dogs and um, Bella has her name on hers. And and people have said this, when they get the, do- the, the dogs, get the vest on, they, they change, their demeanor changes. They know they're going to be working Mm -hmm. and they know what's expected of them and they know you know they're not going to be barking they're not going to be jumping it's they chill it's pretty amazing because people say like I said we have a lot of golden retrievers a lot of big dogs and we can have 10 dogs all together and no one's barking no one's growling or anything I mean they all get along and people are amazed it's like wait a minute yeah (laughs) why aren't these dogs fighting or (laughs) it's like no they're they're they get it. Well, I they find the same thing when it. I put the training collar on. I mean, mm-hmm. Remy is super sweet and loving and just a cuddle bug. But the other half of him is wild child. Jump the fence, run around, chase the bunnies, <laughs> chase the birds, run around in the open space for two hours until he has to literally drag himself home and mm-hmm. flop on the patio because <laughs> he's so that, tired. Yeah. But you put the training collar on him. I can walk all three dogs mm-hmm. by myself. And the, the two younger ones are very active and yeah. you know they want to meet and greet everybody so i have to hold them back sometimes and i have to verbally tell them be easy mm-hmm. be easy heal or else they will literally drag me down the hill to see the next neighbor yeah but they know my mom was saying one time she they sit there was bay window and they sit and watch people go by and they said one of their neighbors and they had a, i think it was a yellow lab um he had a stroke mm. And they would see him walking with that dog, and the dog was walking really slow, standing right next to that guy with, that had the stroke. And then later on, the wife would be, and she was a runner, and she'd come running by, and that dog was, like, full-on running. And <laughs> he just knew, you know, with, with Dad, i got to go slow. i got to, you know, take it easy with Mom. You know, we're going to get some exercise here. But my mom was always amazed at, like, how is that dog not, like, pulling him? Or, yeah. You know, because we've seen how he is with the wife. That is interesting. And they do. They sense that. Um, even, like, when you see little kids walk dogs sometimes, they they just know. <laughs> yeah, I'm always you know, amazed have to how good mine go are with little kids. Yeah. So I have one last question for mm-hmm. you. Do they have any therapy dogs that actually go visit seniors that are, like, in their homes? Or is it all just um, communities and hospitals? and? <sighs> Not that... I know of in the program that we're in, everything is set up usually through 
a hospital or a nursing home or a school. Um, but I don't know. I guess you could I would think, ask. Yeah, I would think that'd be a really good idea because I know one of the medical issues facing seniors is isolation. It's just bad for every part of it. It's bad for your mm-hmm. brain. It's bad mm-hmm. for you physically. Yep. And <clears throat> it's, a, you, it's a challenge. You go into yourself and you, you need to have that social interaction with other people. And if, you know, if you're out. aging in place and you, know, you either have a spouse taking care of you or family or you have people come in and help you, if you had therapy dog come visit you know once or twice a week I can see that being a really big benefit so. mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a liability thing or safety issue for the therapy dog team you know if it was somebody you knew yeah absolutely that that wouldn't be a big deal but um, I know they had talked at one time about wouldn't it be great if we could I think it was um, somebody worked in the sheriff's office and we were talking to one we were at a winery and she said would you ever, you know, like when we have to bring kids, pull them out of their family because of whatever situation is going on in their home and it's, some, you know, they're scared and, you know, boy, it would be great to have, you know, therapy dogs there. And, and they didn't seem to want to do it just from a liability standpoint of, I don't know, just. Well, if you're taking somebody out of their kids out of their <clears throat> home, it might be, might get in the yeah, line of fire. danger or yeah. whatever. And I think that's why they decide not to do it. But I always wondered, you know, I'd go visit with Bella. <laughs> not on an official basis, but I just, if I knew, you know, the people or... Yeah, because, um, you know, with our population aging, it's like mm-hmm. all these issues are just going to multiply. Yep. And, you know, the, the executive director of my mom's community said at some point 70 percent of us will need some sort of assisted living care either within our homes or in a community mm-hmm. and that's a big number yeah. when you figure you know the population is aging Everybody's quickly living well living longer yes <clears throat> just celebrated my, a lot of us yeah well we just celebrated my grandmother's 100th birthday that's amazing it is yeah she's Physically fine, mentally fine. She's mostly blind from um, glaucoma, mm. but she lives alone, and she wow. she shouldn't. No. Um, and I don't know. It's not my responsibility, but taking care of my mom and learning more about Alzheimer's and, and the senior communities by doing this podcast, I feel like I should do something. I know my sister went over for a quick visit one day and ended up cleaning up the kitchen because there was ants everywhere that she couldn't see. And my aunt stayed overnight a couple nights with my grandmother's youngest son. So the husband and wife were there. Mm -hmm. And she said it's... She's convinced that my grandmother has a housekeeper. I don't think she does. Mm. From prior conversations... She doesn't feel it's necessary. She has plenty of money, but she doesn't want to pay people to do those things. But she said if the housekeeper, if she, my grandmother has a housekeeper, all they do is wipe the mirror and, and play on their phone and leave. It's because, because a little Windex yeah, in the air. Yeah, for real. But Because <laughs> um, she said the house was just really dirty. And mm-hmm. I know we lived with her for three months while our home was under construction. And that was 15 years ago. So, and I know... My grandfather added on to the house, and there's a lot of um, not up to code stuff. And he's been gone for 20 years, so you know, maintenance. Just yeah, it's daily. just yeah, yeah. Our house is almost 11 years old, and I'm just surprised at all the little maintenance things that need to be done. Yeah. But she's also not incorrectly concerned that you know because she's older and female and alone that you know any kind of contractor person would rip her off. And I think she's yeah. had some situations where they haven't been 100% honest. Mm-hmm. So, although yeah. she does have a grandson-in-law that works with a lot of those kind of people and manages a lot of those people, so I, I think we could take care of things, but she's right. resistant. Yeah. they. You know, we're in that era right now, uh, Craig's parents. His mom is in a really good assisted living place. She's doing fine, but um, his dad and his wife, they're starting to have a lot of health problems. And they live in a, a multi-level home. Mm-hmm. 
in cold weather, you know, slippery driveway, the whole nine yards, and we keep saying, you know, maybe it's time to look into, you know, they have some really great assisted living areas all around you. No, we're going to stay in our home. Okay, well, if you're going to stay in your home, yeah. you need some help, and you need to let, you know, somebody come in and clean, or somebody, you know, do your driveway, or whatever, but make it a little bit easier for yourselves, but they're pretty resistant right now. That's how my grandmother is. And part of the motivation behind the podcast, too, is to help dispel some of the stigmas of memory loss and aging. And uh, my sister, somewhat jokingly, but more of in a joking tone of voice, tried to convince our grandmother to move into the same community my mom is in, obviously not the memory care, Mm -hmm. would not hear of it at all. And I know from being there and they have excellent food, even though there's no salt in it. Yeah, it's really good. Yes, they have chefs. Yeah. These places, (laughs) they have entertainment they have. And that's my mother-in-law. She goes, I like to go down and there's a couple ladies and they're working on puzzles and it's just somebody you can talk to. And instead of just being in your room all the time, you know, you can go down and you know, grab a snack or watch them, you know, they do movie nights or whatever. It's just pushing them out of, you know, that isolated yeah. sense. I of, wish my grandmother would go give it, just try it for a month. Yeah. You don't have to sell your home or anything, which and that's... And you do a, what you want to do. And that's what, you know, I... Yeah. Craig's mom said, she goes, if I don't feel like going down, I don't. But they'll call me and say, hey, are you okay? Or, you know, like one time she didn't come down for a meal. Do you want us to send something to you know something up to your room? You know, are you feeling okay? And you know, so they're checking, they're making sure. And they well, yeah, and it's and there's somebody <clears throat> kind of at your beck and call, which I know mm-hmm. my grandmother would love. Mm-hmm. So you know, when my dad was on hospice and we had the caregivers in the home, she had no problem asking them to do things for her. Partly, you know, she doesn't see well. It wasn't her home. Mm -hmm. A little hard to navigate to get a, you know, a cup of tea or something, you know, a snack Mm -hmm. or whatever. But, you know, she doesn't seem to understand how she could enjoy the same treatment at her house or she could move someplace where she doesn't have to worry about maintenance and contractors and stuff taking advantage of her lack of vision and, you know, her... Her senior status. That's so hard to imagine. It's so funny. My mother-in-law, her her one condition on ruling out, she's thinking of um, moving to another state to be closer to family. And she she's, the one thing I need to have, because now I have one and I won't live without it, is a walk-in closet. <laughs> but you're basing your whole... <laughs> hey, <Priorities. whatever. laughs> That was one of, the, closet. one of the reasons... I checked into the community my mom is in, and it was very nice. It was very homey. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've been to memory care communities that they almost just seem like jail. Oh, more nursing home. Yeah, dark. I mean, this hers is bright and light. But when they said that they would consider her keeping her dog, I practically threw a check at them. Mm -hmm. It was like, that's it. We're done. Mm (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, I, as we were talking, I'm not sure that the dog is being treated as well as she should be because of my mom's memory issues. But right. I know it was a benefit when we first moved her in that she had her dog because yes. she'd lost everything. The dog my- and a couple pieces of furniture that they recognized. Yep. That's really... <laughs> we hung <laughs> all the pictures yep. that she had in the hallway. All were in her room. Um, she used to do painting, and there was paintings that she had done in the family room. We hung one of those in the bathroom over the toilet because there was nothing in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, having yeah, her dog just, was crucial yeah. when she first moved in. And I, I still think it helps her, which is it's hard because, like I said earlier, I feel the dog needs better care. <laughs> but then my mom's state of mind is important, yeah. so it's just yeah. a challenge. And it's just going to continue to be a challenge. Well, I very much appreciate you talking to me this afternoon. You're welcome. And I'm sure we'll see you guys. When the weather gets better again, all walking, and yes. Bella will be telling all the big dogs. <laughs> I might be little, but I'm in charge. <laughs> Thank you so that. much. You're welcome. Well, as I'm sure you can tell from that conversation, Terry and I are both huge dog lovers. 
As I mentioned during our conversation, I currently have three golden retrievers. Jinx is 10, Luna is three and a half, and Remy is almost 11 months old. And my house feels almost soulless when they are gone at the groomers. But how does having a pet benefit somebody with Alzheimer's? Well, as Terry mentioned, researchers have suggested that pets are good for us, even offering health benefits such as lowering blood pressure and heart rate, reducing the stress hormone cortisol, and boosting levels of the feel-good hormone serotonin. So, of course, that stands to reason then that finding four-legged friends in Alzheimer's and dementia communities is becoming commonplace. And as I mentioned, there are three that live in my mom's community. In fact, some facilities are hiring pet coordinators to aid in the care of residents' pets, which would be nice with my mom's community, so I may actually have to suggest that, but that'll probably cost extra. Anyone who owns a cat or dog can attest to the beauty of the unconditional love animals often forge a special connection with people with Alzheimer's and dementia. Misty was a godsend the day we moved mom into the community. Mom didn't want to be there, which I'm sure many of you have experienced. And if it wasn't for the dog, I'm not sure how my mom would have gotten through the first few days, couple of weeks. She acclimated after about three or four months. And I know Misty was a huge benefit in, in that transition. So how do pets benefit Alzheimer's patients? While companionship is an obvious benefit, a well-timed pet visit may also help with anxiety and depression. It's not uncommon to watch someone transition from emotionless to joyful when a pet enters the room, especially if it triggers pleasant memories. I know there's many residents in my mom's community that always comment on what a nice dog Misty is, what a sweet dog, what a good dog, and it's, it's kind of funny that their memories are allowing them to see the absolute best in Misty because, as I mentioned, Misty is very, very much my mom's dog. If you're considering taking a pet for a visit, check to make sure with the community that it's okay. And once they give you the green light, there are some suggestions you might want to follow to have a good experience. Be mindful of the pet's temperament and energy level. Excessive barking or jumping may do much more harm than good, and the barking can be, you know, stress-inducing, so that's obviously not a good idea. Consider the time of day. Morning or early afternoons are usually better choices than late afternoon or evening when sundowners can set in. And don't wear out your dog's welcome. Always stay tuned, tuned into the loved one's demeanor as they quickly reach a point of overstimulation. If they begin to show signs of agitation, simply know that it might be time to end the visit. And I did bring my oldest um, dog to visit with mom, and I don't think he was terribly comfortable with the whole visit because he kind of hid under the chair next to me the whole time. We were sitting out in the courtyard, and which is lovely, as I've mentioned, and he just didn't seem super thrilled with the whole idea, and I'm not sure I'll take him back. I do want to take one of the other two dogs. As I mentioned earlier, Remy is super sweet and super loving, but he is a puppy and he is very high energy, so that might not be a good idea at this point. And Luna is very loving, not as high energy because she is an adult finally. And she would probably be a good choice, but she's also um, very demonstrative when she wants attention. She will paw you and make sure that you are aware she wants attention. So... Um, She is good with children, so she'd probably be fine with the residents in my mom's community. So once the weather's a little nicer and I can can be assured that we can sit outside for the visit, I might take her with us. So, you know, it's definitely, there are definitely things to consider before you take your dog for a visit. Even, you know, you got to make sure that they're comfortable and the residents are comfortable. You have to keep in mind that Alzheimer's patients can be unpredictable when it comes to pets. Uh, I didn't have any negative experiences, and because there are three dogs that live in the community, I don't think that it would generally have issues. But, you know, you want to keep your eye peeled for anybody that's having an issue that day with your dog. And you don't have to, you know, take your pet to visit 
at a memory community, if you've got neighbors, elderly neighbors that might benefit from a visit from you and your pet, or maybe if you and your pet can and go and take the neighbor out for a short walk, or maybe even a picnic in the park where the dog can play and the and your neighbor can get a, you know, a different perspective on the day, different activity to do. Like Terry mentioned, she would be willing to do that. And obviously it's something to consider. There's a lot of, you know, you would want to make sure that you're well acquainted with the person so that there aren't any issues. But there are so many benefits to having a pet. It's one of the reasons why, despite the lack of stellar care that Misty is getting, I'm reluctant to remove her from the living situation that she's in because I know she benefits my mom so tremendously. It's it's a challenge and it's going to be a continued challenge because, you know, just this morning I got a call from the community's director and the dog is having a problem and I have to go pick her up and take her to the vet, which takes time away from my businesses and uh, it's a challenge, but you know, she gives my mom a smile every day. It gives my mom purpose, which is is useful. So it's it's going to be it's going to be a wait and see as to when the benefits of having Misty there with her outweigh the negatives and when that flips and the benefits are no longer outweighing the negatives then I'm sure you guys will hear about it because it will probably end up being an episode. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Terry and definitely check out the website and the show notes for today's episode. It's titled Unconditional Love, uh, The Benefit of Therapy Dogs. There is a beautiful picture of Bella and part of her business card is also there so you can take a look at her. Like I said, she is super cute and super adorable. And if you have any questions about pets and senior citizens or Alzheimer's patients, you know, feel free to leave us a voice memo that you can do that. It's on the right side of the website or send us an email, whatever works for you. Just shoot us a question and we will definitely answer them. So again, I appreciate you listening. Remember to go to iTunes or Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts, rate and review us because this is how others find us. And we'd love a four or five star review or 25, whatever. You know, I'm not fussy. And I will talk to you guys again next week. Thanks so much. Have a good one.